Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to another episode of the Excavation of Hobbs Barrow. I'm sorry for getting a little grumpy in the last episode about having to look up a puzzle solution. Um, <laughs> I got a little pep talk and I realized I was overreacting a little. Um, I'm also sorry because I did look up the solution to this uh, tower garden key puzzle. Uh, it, it was... Um, I didn't really need to. It was kind of a moment of weakness. I already had the the walkthrough opened up from the other puzzle, and I just out of curiosity checked. And I don't feel so bad about it this time because this is a weirdly designed puzzle. Um, I'll, I'll go into it more once I've done it. In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. Okay, so this is actually the one that we're supposed to the chisel out. The one that says Romeo and Juliet. Which makes me ask, how come when I clicked on this one, that was when it told me that the plaster was cracked? Like, it just gives you that dialogue the first time you click on any of them. Not just the one that you need to do. And then afterwards, no matter which one you click on, it doesn't give you that dialogue again. And I clicked on this one first because it's the most visibly cracked. And I took the fact that they gave me that dialogue as confirmation that I had it right. The clue to figure this out is the fact that Father Roach quotes Romeo and Juliet in the scene right before this one. But in making that a clue, the game kind of assumes that you have already clicked on all these plaques and seen the names on them. Which would like be what makes you think, oh, he quoted Romeo and Juliet and there's a Romeo and Juliet plaque. Um, I am pretty thorough in adventure games, but clicking on every gravestone to see if there's an interesting name has always felt like a waste of time to me. So. I didn't do that, and therefore I didn't get, I didn't get that there was a Romeo and Juliet plaque, and I didn't make the connection between Father Roach's dialogue and this plaque, but it's okay. It's, it's kind of weirdly designed, but I know it, the answer now, I think so I can chip away at this plaster. let's get the key. There's a key behind here. This has to be Father Roach's spare. Yep. We got the key, and we're gonna go up to the tower garden and hopefully get the flowers for Mr. Bryden's poultice. Capital. Capital. Like this pan up. Oh, that's lovely. Wild garlic, fennel, corn mint, borage. Quite the collection. A small label on the pot reads, Flirtwort. This is just what I need. Yay. This is just what I need. <laughs> I love how she repeated that dialogue. It looks like eggs. A handful of flirtwort. Okay. Let's go back to Mother Mildred. I should put the key back. Yeah. I would not have thought to do that, Thomasina. No, that stays on. That's very good of you to do that. Um. Hi, Mother Mildred. I good have day. the flowers. I have the ingredients you asked for. Wonderful. Hand them over. No, no, this is not elderflower. Oh no, I got that spoiled in the walkthrough too. I'm not surprised by that, unfortunately. It's cowbane. 
An easy mistake to make. The two look very similar. Oh. It's safe to eat, as long as you're not a cow. Very toxic to cattle. Where can I find some elderflower? There used to be quite a few elder plants growing here in Hearn Wood, but they've long since gone. Nowadays, you might find the shrub growing within a hedgerow or a private garden. I see. What does elderflower look like? Elderflowers are small, white, and grow in clumps on the elder shrub. Elder shrubs can grow in all shapes and sizes. Just look out for the clumps of tiny white flowers. Okay. Well... This cowbane certainly looks a lot like elderflower. Am I gonna have to feed that to, like, the goat or something? That's awful. <laughs> Alright. So I need something from a private garden. Oh, hey, look, Jane's here. Hi, Jane. Hello, Jane. Miss, watch me juggle. Wow. She's good. Very impressive. I can juggle even more apples. Do you want another apple with a worm in it? I dare you to juggle an extra apple. Easy. Yuck, a worm! Oh. This looks like elderflower to me. Why is this lady selling it? Okay. Be careful with your apples! Sorry, miss. I looked and I was like, oh, that looks kind of like... I didn't realize that that might be elderflower until I noticed that I had to distract her. Hello again, little worm. <laughs> His name is Kenneth. Juggle the apple again. I dare you. Easy. Yuck, a worm! I'm just gonna steal from you real quick. Oi! Put those back! Sorry. What? Um... Hello. The box is full of Hmm. Good day. Fresh produce. Is that elderflower you're selling? Aye. Perfect for teas and tinctures. Any good for sore joints? Aye. Penny a bunch. I'm afraid I don't have any money. Sorry, miss. Does it look like I'm running a charity? Can we work something out? A trade, perhaps? I deal in cash only, miss. No coin, no elderflower. What do you take me for? Do you have any milk? Not today. Sorry. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. Sorry. Um. Okay. Tins of corned beef. Ghastly. Um, can I poke a hole in one of the tins so that the no, beef that's spills? Not it. Okay. Huh. Fresh scotch eggs. So I'm gonna need to find a way to like really distract. Oh, 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 oh! I know, I know, I know. I replace, I replace the elderflower with the cow's bane. God, I hope no one buys that to <laughs> feed to their cow. Nice, okay. I managed to swap them without her noticing. Okay. Uh, I feel really bad about that. I hope no one tries to sell elderflowers to their cows. I mean, feed it to their cows. But it's fine. I figured it out. I'm, I'm a good puzzle solver. I've redeemed good myself day. from the previous episode. <laughs> I have the ingredients you asked for. Wonderful. Hand them over. There you go. Tell Mr. Bryce.
Poseidon to apply this poultice to the area in question. It works wonders. Thank you very much. I don't need to do that. I can just go to the farm. I should take this to Mr. Bryden. I have the stuff for you, sir. Yes? I've got a poultice for your joints, Mr. Bryden. It was prepared by Mildred Walker. Who? You may know her as Mother Mildred. Oh, thank you, lass. That Mildred knows what she's doing. I should have thought to see it myself. She said to apply it directly to where the pain is. It should work very swiftly. I'll give it a try. Oh, that did the trick, lass. Yay. I feel like a lad of 20 again. I suppose you'll be wanting me to milk old Eunice for you in return. If you don't mind, I'd appreciate it. A fair exchange? Do I want your bucket back? Stand well back, lass. Believe me, I'm not coming an inch closer. That goat is demonic. Some fresh milk. Thank you very much, Mr. Bryden. Eunice the Provider, that's the achievement I got. Okay, let's go back to the square. Oh, there's a guy here. Hi, guy. Good day. Hello there. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ralph. Ralph. Not seen you around before. I'm just visiting. What brings you to the market today? I purchased a scotch egg for me tea. I don't know what scotch eggs are, but that sounds like a gross thing to put in your tea. You want a bite? No, thank you. I'm looking for some help with an excavation tomorrow. Might you be interested? Sorry, miss. I've already got my own job. Enjoy your scotch egg. I will. Okay. Nice to talk to you, Mr. Scotch Egg Guy. I got your milk, lady. I've got a pail of fresh milk here for you, Miss Tompkins. You haven't. Here. Mom, you've saved my hide. Thank you. Are you all right? I'm worried about Mr. Ambrose. Any road, I'm heading back to Panswick Manor now. Would you still like to meet his lordship? Very much so. Now, I can't guarantee you'll be home all right. He's a very busy man. I'll take my chances. Follow me, then. Come on over. It's not much further. This way? Interesting. Wait. What time do you call this? Sorry, Mum. Give it here, then. What the hell is this muck? Goat's milk, Mum. You daft bit. Since when does his lordship take goat's milk with his tea? Oh, he will not be pleased. Get back to your sweeper before I clip you over the head. Sorry, ma'am. Where is Lord Panswick? Sorry, ma'am. I can't talk. Miss Fenchurch is ever so mad at me. Oh, no. Hi, Miss Fenchurch. I'm sorry about the milk. Hello there. Bugger off, you whelp! This is private land! Okay. Some fine looking flowers. Hmm. That looks like the one by, um, Leonard's house. It's a symbol of some kind. A moon, perhaps? I've no time. 
How very bucolic. Beautiful word. <laughs> Alright, just going to the back. Um, so I probably have to do something here. I don't know what. I'm not sure they. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. They... No. What do I do here? Oh, she took the milk inside. I was wondering if it might be possible to speak with Lord Panswick. Are you deaf, girl? Don't make me fetch the guards! They're armed, you know! By Christ, you're like a dog with a bone! Do you want to get yourself shot? I can assure you the only things getting shot around here are the pheasant. And perhaps the odd grouse. Hi, dude. James. <laughs> Greetings, my lady. Lord James Panswick, at your disposal. Why? I had a suspicion. Huh? <laughs> you flirted with a with the governor, Thomasina. Your Lord Panswick. As I live and breathe. You could have told me that before. What is life without mystery, Miss Bateman? A predictable stagger to the grave. I was imagining someone. Much older and far less handsome? Yes, to be frank. <laughs> <laughs> See? I can read your mind, my dear. Now, may I ask, what brings you to my manor? I wanted to ask if I could borrow some of your labourers. Oh? For what purpose? I intend to excavate Hobbs Barrow tomorrow, and I'm in need of some assistance. An excavation? How very delightful. We're in the middle of our own works right this minute. Follow me, Miss Bateman. Come along. I promise I don't bite. For generations, this chapel was a place of unique devotion. Those are the guys from the, the woods. Well, this was until some of my more ungrateful ancestors forgot him and abandoned it. Why did they abandon it? Men of great wealth and power can grow so comfortable that they forget they still need the divine. The sacrifices required to maintain such a relationship were no longer being made. The chapel soon turned to rubble, and with time, even the villagers forgot him. His influence endured, but only with the isolated few who lived on the very fringes of these moors. Um... Who is this him you're talking about? I don't think it's God. Because there's a there's a church in town. They are very devoted. Believe it or not, my family's fortunes have dwindled ever since. Since I succeeded my father, it has become my life's work to restore this place of worship. With this sacred place rebuilt, he shall be venerated once more, and the name Panswick shall be uttered again across all of England. He guided the hands of my ancestors. Now it is time for him to guide us. Bewley is a godless place. Have you forgotten about St. Edmunds? Father Roach might disagree. <laughs> I shall bring him back to these lands, and this chapel shall be his seat once again. I, I'm still not sure he's actually talking about God. A new world. But it seems like you wish to bring back the past. From out of the old world shall come the new. A greater truth. But I digress. Horace, my dear fellow. Aye, your lordship. This fair lady here is in need of some assistance. Would you and your chaps be up for a spot of digging at Hobbs Barrow tomorrow? Hobbs Barrow? Ah, your lordship, tis no bother. Good man. You're in luck, my dear. These are my finest. They're all yours. Thank you. I am grateful. On one condition. Yes? I've heard wonders about Mary de Plancy's Bakewell puddings. I'd rather like to try them for myself. Your lordship, you're giving me the help of your men in exchange for cakes. Yes. But... Farewell, my beauty. Okay. Wait.
Hi, Horace. Is his lordship joking about the Bakewell puddings? No, miss. His lordship is a man of folly. <laughs> How ridiculous. He treats you all right if you do what he asks. They have some decent equipment here. It will be more than useful for the excavation. Okay. Let's go back to the church. Can I have one of... She only sells them for money, though. I need to distract her and take what's in the basket. Good day to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. De Plancy. Do you still have some of your homemade Bakewell puddings, Mrs. De Plancy? Oh, you're too late, pet. I've a few left, but they're set aside for someone else. Might you please be able to bake me some more? Sorry, I, I, I'm not in the mood for baking. Truth be told, my dear husband Albert passed away recently. Me thoughts are all over the shop. I'm so sorry to hear that. Aye, he's in God's hands now. Were you married to Albert a long time? Aye, too many years to count. He was a cobbler here in Bewley. The most dashing cobbler in all of England, I used to tell him. <sighs> Love is precious, pet. There's nought that can replace the all it leaves in your heart. I can relate to that in my own way. Her dad. I wish you strength in this difficult time. Thank you. With God's blessing, I'll get by. May I ask who you have set aside the puddings for? Oh, uh, Father Roach. He won't be back until tomorrow. Won't they be off by then? Not at all. Besides, pet, as I told you, I'm not in the mood for all this baking chatter. Sorry, Mrs. De Plancy. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. This must belong to Mrs. De Plancy. Yeah. I figured they would be in there. Um. How do I distract her so I can... That's not my... Steal her puddings. Ugh. I keep stealing stuff from people. I hate it. Oh. The simple wooden cross bears a small plaque on which is inscribed the name Albert de Plancy. I figured as much. Relative, are you? No, just looking. He with a cobbler. Who's going to mend me boots now? <laughs> hmm. Hello. Does this fresh grave belong to Mrs. De Plancy's late husband? Aye. Rather bare, isn't it? My job is to dig the graves, not decorate them. Goodbye. There are. Okay. The simple wooden cross. So. <laughs> um, I would guess I need to decorate the grave somehow. There may be a back. Yeah. Um. The simple wooden cross. The dev. Oh, I didn't ask. Mrs. Plancy about her husband's grave. Could do that. Good day to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. De Plancy. I saw your late husband's grave, Mrs. De Plancy. I am very sorry for your loss. Thank you, pet. I'm ashamed to say I couldn't afford now more than a simple wooden cross. You were a colourful man, our Albert. He deserves better. He loved his flower beds. He's only been gone a fortnight, and already his plants have gone to rot. May the Lord forgive me. Plants are difficult to maintain. I'm sure Albert would understand. His precious hippiastrum were the first to go. I would have loved to lay one on his grave. What does a hippiastrum flower look like? Oh, beautiful things they are. Tall stems topped with large red flowers. Hard to grow in this climate, 
They were his pride and joy. I think I know where I can get one of those. The remarkable thing is there's no scent to him. That's why he loved him so much. You see, he hated anything that smelled sickly sweet. If the astral were just perfect. Let me know if you come across one, won't you? Of course, Mrs. De Plancy. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Alright. I know where to get one of those. These match the description of the flowers Mrs. De Plancy mentioned. There's no scent. You get away from my hippie astrum! Ah, uh, apologies. Move! Well, that confirms it. <laughs> Day. Hello. I really need one of those hippie astrum flowers. Why? It's a long story. Might you please be able to get one for me? Or distract Miss Fenchurch so I can take one? Those flowers are Miss Fenchurch's favourites. She spends hours looking after them. Sorry, Mom. It's just that I'm so worried about Mr. Ambrose. The milkman? Aye. We were to run away together today. I see. It's sick that he stood me up. Aww. Without Mr. Ambrose, this job is all I have. I can't risk losing it over a flower. I'm sorry, Miss Tompkins. I still haven't seen him. Do you think he's abandoned me? I'm sure that's not the case. He must have been delayed somewhere. Could you try to find him for me, ma'am? Uh... Oh, please, ma'am. I'd do anything for you if you found my love. I can try. Oh, thank you. You're ever so kind, Mum. What does Mr. Ambrose look like? He's got brown hair. I'm afraid I'll need a bit more to go on. Sorry, Mum. I'm too upset. Please find him, won't you? Hey, stop your nattering and get back to your sweeping. Sorry, Miss Fenchurch. All right. So now we've got a guy to find. This this is quite an extended string of hold on. Get the puddings to Lord Panswick, but to do that I need to get a flower for the grave and to do that I need to find the milkman. I feel like I'm on a roll though, so I'm gonna go looking. See if anyone knows of Mr. Ambrose. Good day. Hello there. Do you know Mr. Ambrose, the milkman? I do, yes. Have you any idea where he might be? He is usually here by now. So I heard. He normally arrives by the road to the east of Bewley. Thank you. Enjoy your scotch egg. I will. <laughs> okay, so over here. Oh, flashback. There we are. Your shells are looking much more interesting now. I pestered Mother for years to let me bring some of your treasures here. I think she's worried that I'd want to follow in your path. She has hidden most of your discoveries away. I had to beg her to bring me to visit you, you know. I shouldn't worry you with all that. Do you know that I have a story for each of these pots? Well, I don't know if they're all true. They are my memories. Even though I was so young, I still remember our adventures together. Would you like me to share my memories of them? Well, I'm going to, whether you like it or not. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Hmm. I think you brought this one back from a trip abroad. I would have loved to go with you, but Mother didn't want me to. I remember you being so proud of it. It looks ancient. You were incredibly excited about this one. I hadn't gone on an expedition with you yet. You were so happy about it, showing it to Mother and I. You didn't stop talking about it for hours. I thought, how can Daddy be so excited over some old broken pottery? But it wasn't long until I understood. We've talked about this one. We've talked about... We found this one together in that mucky old barrow near Avebury. I think it was the second time you'd taken me on a dig with you. 
I remember you bringing it up to your face to look inside and shrieking in horror. There's a bloody rat in there, you screamed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thomasina's voice actress is doing a good job. Sounding young here. Mother was so angry when you brought this one home, wasn't she? William, that simply will not do. It's taking up all the space on the mantelpiece. Once you moved it to your study, I remember creeping in to take a peek at it. This is from the first dig I remember you taking me on. The excavation of West Kennet Long Barrow. I found it wedged behind a stone as you ate your sandwich. You said, now there's a tiny urn for a tiny girl. I almost forgot. While I was searching for your pots in the shed, I found one of your manuscripts. I thought Mother had burnt all your notebooks, but she missed one. It was an account of barrows across the east of England. I managed to read it all before Mother took it away. Daddy, it was fascinating. I've decided that is what I want to do with my life. I'm going to travel the country, excavating and documenting my own finds. Well, as soon as I'm old enough to escape Mother, that is. When you're feeling better, we can go out on expeditions together again, just like we used to. I promise you'll get better, Daddy. I'll do whatever it takes to make it so. Okay. Um, I think that that is actually a good place to end the episode. I will... Find the milkman, Mr. Ambrose, and unravel that whole quest chain uh, when I come back. So, I have been Mars, and I will be back with more The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow.